So just a quick pick of it with some sun. What's interesting, next to these three, a woman on the left. And on the left side, the same thing. Now those characters are named. I'm now in St. Giles Cathedral, and it will be interesting to compare the stained glass here with the stained glass earlier this afternoon. This almost looks modern, nearly inscrutable visually, not to mention content-wise. Abel, Noah, Enoch. This already has a darker aspect simply because of the width of the framing inside the panel, the large arch. <clears throat> they do have different themes. This one seems to be a theme of warriors all in white. Here the artist seems to use natural background like rock or forest or whatever, at least the allusions to. But all of individuals or pairs of individuals, Samson and Goliath, there in the middle, Goliath's head I suppose. Here they almost seem to be photographs or paintings rather than classic stained glass. This seems to be the most elaborate stained glass work as a matter of pieces. And it seems to be more colorful, more detailed. It looks like it uses a fair amount of black paint to define texture. Here, rounding Christ in that lower arc of white clouds is effective. Certainly the character with the red cape or whatever it is that he has on the yellow shirt must tell a significant part of the story. And the document held by the men in the center must be critical. Certainly those re seem to reflect either Greek or Roman, you would think Roman. But it's almost as though Jesus is speaking to the statue from an art viewpoint. And yet maybe the men in the central pattern are checking his words. Here the crests are very colorful. There isn't the intricacy that frankly seemed to lead to great confusion visually of the church we viewed earlier today. This is looking at the ceiling in an entry, another entryway for the church that's closed off, but very elaborate vaulting and ribbing. Certainly, I would think not structurally valid as much as aesthetically somewhat broke over the top. This is interesting, a section here of simple but interesting tile work. 
uh, but doesn't seem to be present elsewhere. The rest of the church floor seems to be mottled and a motley collection of all kinds of materials that have been used in the past. And I'm standing down along one of the side um, hallways, for lack of memory of the name of the, um, looking at the ceilings to see if they're different. They appear to be different, but and I'll rotate the camera. Um, these appear to be stone on the overall surface, as opposed to the rest of it, which doesn't seem to be stone, but seems to be plastered over. Maybe it's plastered over stone, I don't know. Here you get the sense of and can see the very detailed um, ribbing that goes into these vaults. As opposed to this interior, whatever you call it, this aisle, there's much simpler, much larger. Here what seems to be a more somber stained glass window, but that may be the lighting from the exterior playing on it, or not. Here individual characters apparently, but up above some interesting rural detail, like the pigs over to the right here. Or the sheep, rather. <laughs> Sheep's more appropriate to the Bible than pigs. And this detail, almost looking uh, minaret-like. Here I'm at a rather elaborately carved pulpit that kind of is reminiscent of what you would see in Florence churches. And I want to get a sense from this point, though, because I'm about halfway down almost at the center, or at least at the, where the nave is crossed by the, whatever it crosses. I just wanted to look at, the, this is the ceiling in the front of the church. Pretty blue, really makes the ribbing stand out. That again, what seems to me to be modern inscrutable stained glass. Now I've turned around and I'm in the center uh, of the nave looking back down the way that we have come to what we would normally consider to be the front of a church or the part where the altar would be I should say. So the complexity of the ribbing returns. The ceiling appears to be some kind of stone I'm looking in one of the side aisles, can't remember the name, and now into the nave's ceiling, just to get a flavor of the angles of the arches and so forth. And now we'll pan down. This church seems strange to me because this is the end that the altar should be at, but there is no evidence of altar down here. Now that could simply be because they're remodeling the church. Now I'm going to do a kind of a wandering painting uh, pan just to pick up the mix of architecture and stained glass as you move, the camera moves visually through the various portions of this church. What I think is fascinating is the depth that we're getting right here into that area. So let's close in on it a bit.
Given the location of this pulpit, unless they moved it, and they may have, um, I still find it curious, no matter how you choose to orientate the seats, it appears that the center of this church is in the dead center, at the transept, I think it's called. This is looking down the right side of the church towards the entrance, which should be the rear of the church, even though it's the entrance. Now I'm shooting right from what would be called the center of the church or the transept, I think. This is a very beautiful stained glass with the purples and the blues. And an entire several panels dedicated to the picture there. So it's not chopped up into too many sections, although it is at the bottom. But even still, there are three panels that attempt to tell one story. And it's interesting, even from this vantage point, there are uh, at least three altars. There's one. You can see the one in the center, which is fairly mobile, that one right there. And then there's those uh, 